Hi there and welcome back to Plow and Pantry. Welcome back to Thanksgiving Thursdays. If you are watching this on Thanksgiving, happy Thanksgiving to you. Um, I am filming this ahead of time because I won't be making videos on Thanksgiving. But I am going to be showing you this Thursday and next Thursday um, some ideas with leftovers. So if you have a ton of turkey leftovers, I would recommend keeping out enough to do stuff the leftovers you like to have and freezing the rest for some time when you're not so sick of turkey and you want to try something else. This, by the way, is a collaboration with some other YouTube friends and I will link their channels below and see who gets a video up today. Um, but we all have Thanksgiving Thursday ideas for this month, every Thursday in November. And today's is actually a delicious but easy breakfast burrito. I used my little hand chopper thingy to do some um, potatoes, an onion, one potato, one large-ish russet potato, um, one yellow onion, and one apple. And I'm just getting that going in a little bit of butter. And this is the start. This is like a combination between a hash and a breakfast burrito. And it is a delicious way to hold on to those last few flavors of the fall season. I'm one of those apple lovers more than pumpkin, and so I love that this has apple in it. Before I move on to cranberry land, um, I am salt and peppering this. I tried to prep some parts so that it wouldn't be such a long video today, because y'all are probably busy. Next week, I have another great leftover idea, so if you have that turkey, it's not going to last a week, but free some. You're going to want to make it. Um, what I'm doing here is just letting this get all cooked up like hash browns kind of. In fact, if you've had hash browns, maybe you've had company over and you've made breakfast and you've got like ha leftover hash browns in the fridge, you could totally use that. Um, but I'm really, the longest thing to, that will take, the thing that will take the longest to cook in here is the potato. So once the potatoes are browned, I'll start adding other ingredients. Um, like I said, one yellow onion, medium-ish size. I, you could, this is an easy recipe to make smaller or bigger, depending on how much you need, how many leftovers you have, stuff like that. For the apple, I used a Honeycrisp this time. Um, I've used Granny Smith before. I would, I like the tartar flavors. You can use whatever you want, but I would suggest whatever you use that it's one of the firmer flesh ones, not a softer, like a Red Delicious or Golden Delicious, because those won't hold up as much to the whole cooking process. And you could use um, avocado oil or extra virgin olive oil instead of butter if you want. Sometimes I use a combo because I like them both. And I am going to add into here, I did some salt and pepper. I'm going to add a little bit of thyme, dried thyme. I'm using all dried herbs today. Um, that was about a half teaspoon. And I am going to let this start to cook up. I started already. I have some scrambled eggs here. Um, put this back because that's gonna go on my breakfast burrito. You can totally leave them out. It's, again, your flavors. And I also have some chopped up leftover turkey over here. Um, I just took what I had, I just grabbed some out and I just started chopping it up into little pieces to go in the burrito filling. Some spices we'll get to once we add it in. And I also made, let's stir this here so it doesn't stick. Also made a little bit of barbecue sauce um, that I'll throw in here. Um, Seriously, this is, if you want a way to use leftovers um, without it tasting like you're having the same thing over again, completely change the flavor profile. So this is like a barbecue apple hash burrito and it's so good. Um, I made my barbecue sauce. I'm gonna use like a cup of it. You can use store-bought barbecue sauce. You can make your own. I just have, I usually make my own with ketchup that I make from my, my garden tomatoes. Um, and. I don't make barbecue sauce and can it, but I'll can a bunch of ketchup. And then as I need barbecue sauce, I will turn some of that ketchup into barbecue sauce. But again, you can use store-bought, it's totally fine. And then I'll have tortillas and cheese. And that's about all that goes in here. At this point, you're just, you're really just waiting for those um, bits of potato to get done. I use that chopper partly because it makes it so small and I want it to go kind of quickly. And the smaller you chop your potato, the faster it will cook. So when I have Thanksgiving leftovers, the turkey part, um, there are a couple things that we really love to have in our house. Of course, there is leftover turkey sandwiches. 
I love a turkey sandwich either on a roll or on wheat bread that has horseradish and red onion. Love to know how you eat yours below. My husband puts cranberry sauce on his. Eh, not a fan. Um, let me know how you like your leftover turkey sandwich below though. The other thing my family really insists on having with leftovers is a creamed turkey that I make over rice. I'm not sure if I have a video for that or not. Um, if I do, I'll link it. But it is just, it's really like, almost like a white gravy with a couple extra different seasonings in it with the turkey and we serve it over rice. You can also have it over mashed potatoes and it's really good. But after that, I start getting into completely different flavor profiles so that it doesn't seem like we're having leftovers all week long, right? And so that is what this does, is it brings the turkey along with barbecue sauce, which is not a normal Thanksgiving flavor, apple, which can be, but usually isn't stand out as a Thanksgiving flavor, but it's still fall, it's still apple season. I still love apples. And that gets in here with some savory goodness. So I'm just stirring this around until those potatoes are starting to brown. Okay, so my um, little hash mixture here of potato and onion and apple is um, cooked all the way through. Potato and things are starting to slightly brown. Um, I, I kind of like to like spread them evenly and kind of press them down the pan to help with that browning. Um, I'm gonna add in my leftover turkey now. I have probably a little bit over a pound of turkey here. And at this point, the turkey is already cooked. So we're not needing to finish the cooking process here. My um, potatoes are cooked through, my onions are cooked through, my apple is cooked through, my turkey is cooked through. <laughs> Getting a picture here. And I am ready to add in my barbecue sauce as well. Again, I'm adding about a cup, but add whatever you need to cover and season the amount of filling you have. Um, and also considering how much barbecue flavor you like. My husband always likes to add a little bit extra barbecue sauce to his. Um, I like to know that the barbecue is there, but not be saturated with only barbecue. So I'm just stirring this to make sure it's all well incorporated. And as soon as that turkey is heated through, we're ready to make our crispy hash burritos. And I love these to be um, crisped up on a skillet. There's just something about it that's just, mm. Okay, the last thing I'm gonna add is some garlic and oregano. Again, I'm using my dried spices today. Probably like half a teaspoon of each. And the important thing with this is just to heat it through and to make sure that you are cooking it down enough that you don't have too much liquid from the barbecue sauce. Um, I make mine pretty thick to begin with and I don't overuse it, but if you use like a watery one or you put a whole ton in here, you might wanna cook it to where it's really um, not drippy so that you don't make your burritos soggy. All right, let's make ourselves a burrito. Okay just to show you one burrito how i do it hopefully the dog here's the package opening get a burrito sized tortilla i'm going to put on a little bit of this filling the important thing with the filling when it comes to your barbecue sauce is just to make sure that enough liquid has cooked out that you're not um, going to make your burrito soggy okay. get some of my scrambled egg here and again, just like um, the potato, if you have scrambled eggs left over, it's a good way to use the leftovers. And then I'm gonna put on some cheddar, which I have not opened. I don't normally buy pre-shredded cheddar, but this year I needed the extra um, convenience. I put on cheddar. I have also lo uh, loved putting Gouda on here. And Havarti, those both go very well with turkey and um, apple. So then you just do your regular burrito roll. I like to do the sides first. I know people do the bottom first and then the sides. Do the sides, bottom, tuck and roll. And then we're gonna get in a skillet. Okay, so I want my hot skillet sprayed. 
these sprays always work better like this. And here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take my burrito top side up. I'm gonna put it there just cause I wanna get some of that spray onto it and flip it seam side down. So that the seam side down cooks first, but I have this um, spray oil, my avocado oil on top so that it crisps up when I flip it over. It just takes maybe a minute to two minutes. I'm just looking for brown on the edge. Again, the filling is already warm except for the cheese and that will melt into there um, as this crisps up and as it sits in there with the warm ingredients. All right, let's check this. There we go. Just starting to golden. I just like that crispy shell. It's totally optional, you don't have to do that. But I think it just adds an extra texture that is um, very suitable to this particular flavor profile. I started eating this. It was too good to wait. It's been smelling so good in here. This is so good. This is not at all like a leftover. Not at all like a Thanksgiving meal, but uses the ingredients you have on hand with it. It's warm, it's crispy, it's savory and sweet, it's comforting. It's perfect for this time of year. I'm gonna finish this and I will see you next week with another Thanksgiving leftover idea. Remember to freeze your extra turkey.